Andrew Weissman, let me just start with you because um, your Twitter feed is one that I, I go looking for um, to the degree that you can find anything on Twitter or XYZ or whatever it is these days. Tell me what you are reading in the tea leaves as you were sort of the closest we can get to getting inside the mind of Jack Smith. Sure. Um, well, you know, it makes sense that people like Chris Krebs and Rich Donahue are uh, among the people that Jack Smith wants to talk to. Uh, he wants to talk to all of the people who were telling the former president that there was no fraud in the election that would justify overturning the results. But I think that there's more than that. He's particularly interested in the people who Rich Donahue, in the clip that you just played, said there were people in his ear, conspiracy theorists, saying the opposite. Those are the particular people who Jack Smith has to worry about. Was there enough being said to the former president that gives him a basis to say he had sort of a good faith belief in what was going on, that he didn't, he, that he had, you know, he, he didn't really accept what was being said by all of these other people. So that's the reason that, for instance, you are hearing about the, uh, the effort to talk to Rudy Giuliani, the effort to talk to Bernie Carrick and review all of his documents, because those two people were tasked with looking to see if there was fraud. And to the extent that they did not find any, that's yet more evidence that can be used to show that the people who were sort of real loyalists to the former president, even they were not finding that fraud. So this is really sort of scouring the earth on the part of Jack Smith to make sure that he is anticipating any and all defenses that are raised by the former president in the upcoming charges. That's so interesting. Andrew Weissman, there's a clear pattern that these are individuals who um, were, as you said, Trump loyalists to the end. And the only thing that we know of that they were not willing to do was to fabricate fraud. And it seems that these are also people who had contact with Trump. They're not just people who, um, you know, like Chris Christie was on ABC um, declaring that the election was over, Joe Biden had won. But Chris Krebs goes toe-to-toe, face-to-face -to -face with Donald Trump. So does Mr. Donahue. How does that factor in? Absolutely. So a little bit like the January 6th committee made its case almost entirely, as you've noted, uh, through people who were Trump loyalists. Uh, that really goes to how they're going to play to a jury. These are people who were his people telling him this. I mean, Rich Donahue was a total Trump loyalist. He used to be the U.S. attorney in the office I came from, the Eastern District of New York. Um, he was very much a loyalist of Donald Trump. The line that he and the acting attorney general, Jeff Rosen, were not willing to cross was engaging in insurrection. Um, so, you know, they had their lines and they were not going to use the Justice Department to say something that was false. By the way, the, the quote that you have, which is essentially say something that's fraud and we'll take the rest, is exactly what he wanted Zelensky to do in mm -hmm. Ukraine. I mean, it's just so reminiscent of, I don't care what the truth is, just say that you're opening an investigation, just say that you're opening an investigation into fraud. I can do the rest with that. And that's a line that commendably, uh, but it's a low bar uh, that, you know, Jeff Rosen and Rich Donahue at the Justice Department were not willing to take. Um, but to your main point, it is that case that can be made through Trump appointees. And that's going to go a long way if you're Jack Smith and thinking about how these people will play to a jury. It's going to play really well because these are his people. It's not like you're calling, you know, some some left wing opponent. You're not calling a, a Biden political operative as a witness. This is these are his people. And so that if you're a prosecutor is exactly the kind of witness who you want. Well, I mean, Andrew Weissman, one, one more point on this. I mean, DOJ also did something highly unusual slash unethical. They went out and investigated unfounded claims and fraud. I mean, let me play Richard Donahue testifying to all of the wild goose chases the U.S. Department of Justice went on. We went through a series of others. The uh, truck driver who uh, claimed to have moved an entire truck to trailer of ballots from New York to Pennsylvania. That was also incorrect. We did an investigation with the FBI interview witnesses at the front end and the back end of that, that trailer's um, 
transit from New York to Pennsylvania. We looked at loading manifests. We interviewed witnesses, including, of course, the driver. Um, and we knew it wasn't true. Uh, whether the driver believed it or not was never clear to me, but it was just not true. Now, because of what ensues, because the U.S. Capitol was ransacked, because people lost their lives, because law enforcement officials engaged in, quote, medieval hand-to-hand -hand combat with Donald Trump supporters, we never really got to this part of the story in a robust manner. But that's not really DOJ's role, is it? So, you know, it's all a question of um, how much factual predication did they have and when were they doing it? Uh, this is something that the Justice Department, up until Bill Barr, had very clear rules about when they would participate in these kinds of investigations and the kind of factual predication. Um, it, a long way of saying that the Department of Justice had in place procedures to try and make sure that they were not actually or perceived to be weighing in on a pending election. Those were thrown by the wayside by uh, the former Attorney General, Bill Barr, and that's why they were engaging this. Ironically, it actually ended up um, helping because they'd actually done some of this investigation and they could tell the former president after the November election, by the way, we've looked at all of this and there's nothing there. Um, but this this is, um, to your, the point we were just discussing, this is an example of true Trump loyalists who were willing, not willing to go that extra mile. They were not willing to overthrow the will of the people um, in, at, the, at the very last analysis. Um, they weren't willing to do this. And these are people who are willing to do a whole lot that I personally found really deplorable um, up until mm -hmm. that point. Um, and so you're correct to point that out. But I do think that is in, that's one more reason, though, from Jack Smith's perspe perspective, these are really, really useful, good witnesses in terms of proving uh, what Donald Trump was up to.